Uh, good evening, everyone. I wish to welcome everyone to the ordinary meeting for September. Uh, before we go on to the public forum, um, just have, and this is for Councillor Brown, who's looking very nervous. Uh, well, and it was really quite nice. We had a, had a presentation from the Honourable Wendy Tuckerman yesterday. So uh, I'd like to advise that the Honourable Wendy Tuckerman, New South Wales Minister for Local Governments, visited Broken Hill yesterday to present Councillor Marion Brown with the Minister's Women in Local Government Award, a recognising Councillor Brown's distinguished record of service to the local government and her dedication to the community of Broken Hill. Councillor Brown has served on council for 34 years from 1983 to 2004 and then 2009 to date. On behalf of council and the citizens of Broken Hill, I ask you to join me in congratulating Councillor Brown on receiving this prestigious local government award. Very well deserved, Councillor Brown. <laughs> I would never do that to you, Councillor Brown. Just a thank you will do. <laughs> um, so persuade to Council's Code of Meeting Practice Policy, two public forum sessions will be held during the Council meeting. One public forum session will be held following the acknowledgement of the Broken Hill Mining and History to hear submissions from the public on matters listed for consideration at the meeting and also to hear submissions on general matters and to end the other public forum session will be held prior to confidential and will consider submissions from the public on matters considered by council at this meeting. Statement of ethical obligations. All councils undertook an oath of or affirmate or affirmation at the beginning of their term of office and declared to undertake the duties of the office of councillor in the best interests of the people of the Broken Hill local government area and the city of Broken Hill, and that they will faithfully and impartially carry out the functions, powers, authorities and discretions vested in them under the Local Government Act or any other act to the best of their ability and judgments. Live streaming and recording of council meeting. This council meeting is being live streamed via YouTube and recorded and published online via council's website. To those present in the meeting today, by participating in this public meeting, you are consenting to your image, voice and comments being recorded and published. The mayor and or general manager have the authority to pause the live stream if comments or debate are considered defamatory or otherwise inappropriate for publishing. Participants are advised that they may be subject to legal action if they engage in unlawful behaviour or commentary. Uh, call for apologies. We have an apology from Councillor uh, Ron Page. We have a mover. I'll move that way. Move Councillor Gallagher, seconded. Councillor Allgate, all those in favour? Cleared it carried. Uh, leave of absence. We have two leave of absence, uh, one from Deputy Mayor Hickey uh, and also one from Councillor Boland. Can we have a mover for those? Move Councillor Turley, seconded Councillor Chandler. All those in favour? Declare it carried. Uh, we have nil registrations for the public forum. Uh, would anyone in the public forum like to speak? No, we have nil, nil public forum for tonight. Uh, that minutes of the ordinary meeting of council of the city of Broken Hill held 31st of October 22. Do we have a mover for the minutes? Move the, move the minutes. Move Councillor Second. Orgate, seconded Councillor Gallagher. All those in favour? Clear them carried. Accepted. Uh, disclosures of interest. Do we have any disclosures of interest? Um, Mr. Councillor Mayor, Turley. No, no, I don't have any. But I just wondered, we've missed um, the prayer and acknowledgement of oh, the yes, we have. and you acknowledgement are... of the Broken Hill mining history. We have indeed. Could we have uh, someone to do the prayer? Councillor Hewitt. Almighty God, we ask you to invoke your blessing upon this council, direct and prosper our deliberations to the advancement and true welfare of the people of the council area, our state and Australia. Amen. Thank you. 
Councillor Gallagher. Yes, we acknowledge the traditional owners on the land on which we meet today, the land of the Winnicarley people, and pay respect to those elders, past, present, and emerging. Councillor Olga. We take the time to reflect, remember, and honour the over 800 miners that have lost their lives and those that were crippled or maimed on the line of load. We thank the brave miners and their wives who were part of the 1919-20 strike that lasted over 500 days and delivered a 35-hour working week. Mining is our past and our future. Thank you, Councillor Allgate. Uh, no disclosures have been... Thank you, Councillor Turley. Um, no disclosures of interest. Number 10, Merrill Minutes. Uh, there's nil on the book, uh, but if we could just... Um, if someone would like to second this as well, that'd be good. Just congratulations of the debutants and their squires. Uh, also, congratulations to the citizens who um, was confirmed at the recent citizenship ceremony. Also, congratulations to the Hell Hill Festival organisers uh, and also to the Broken Hill uh, Brewery for their two... Uh, three gins, they got a gold and two silvers. Um, and also just an acknowledgement of the Queen's passing. So could we have a seconder for that? Councillor Chandler, uh, any councillors like to speak on the matter at all? Uh, just, um, just like to say that uh, Councillor Chandler was at the debutante ball and a few of the uh, staff, it was a really good night. So um, I think without a doubt, it will be uh, a, a very big event. Oh, just um, also on those, uh, also uh, thank yous also to council employees, Shannon Bottom, Botton, uh, Caitlin, and their dance instructor, Jen Jenna Murray, and also the Classic Car Club. If uh, you're happy to have that in there as well, Alan. Yep. Uh, so all those in favour? Declared carried unanimously. Thank you. Uh, notices of motion, there's nil. Rescission motions, there's nil. Uh, reports from delegates. Uh, item one, reports from delegates dated September 1922, attendance at the Australian Mining Cities Alliance Directors Meeting. Do we have a mover? Move the recommendation. Council yes, Allgate, seconded. seconded. Councillor Gallagher, Councillor Allgate. Uh, yes, thanks, uh, McKendy. I think uh, this is a, this has been a really important uh, opportunity for the council's uh, general manager and deputy mayor to meet with ministers and senators. Uh, you don't get that opportunity. You don't get an opportunity like that on uh, on many occasions, let alone to meet with so many. Uh, different port holders of different portfolios. I think the important thing is that they were, it appears from what I understand, it appears that they are sympathetic to the uh, Broken Hill City Council's proposition or proposal that uh, fringe benefits tax be uh, exempt, that, that mining communities, remote mining communities in certain areas be exempt from fringe benefits tax, which would uh, make uh, working in, in those areas much more attractive than it currently is. And uh, I also noticed that uh, uh, discussions were held about the possibility of seeking uh, $25 million worth of funding for the council's uh, upgrade of the airport runway, which is uh, really urgently required because it's on the, uh, the last few months of its uh, normal service life. Having said that, uh, the general manager was there with de the deputy mayor. I wonder if he'd like to comment more specifically. Uh, you'd like, happy to comment? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as per the deputy mayor's um, report and, and Councillor Allgate's comments, uh, we made the trip over to Canberra uh, three weeks ago now as a part of the Australian Mining Cities Alliance. So that's with the um, other mining councils of Kalgoorlie, Boulder, 
uh, sorry, uh, Mount Isa, Isaac Regional Council and Karatha uh, Regional Council. So the, the mayors and the GMs or the equivalents um, CEOs uh, made the journey there. And we met with uh, Minister McBain, um, Senator McKenzie, Senator McDonald, and also with the senior advisor uh, for Minister Madeline King and, and really focused on four uh, main areas. And they were around um, support to support to regional mining cities in regard to the climate change bill and making sure that there was also going that the negative impacts to mining communities in relation to the to the climate change bill were taken into consideration and support and funding would be provided to those um, to those councils and areas and obviously that's um, more aligned to um, our counterparts in the Australian Mining Seas Alliance as opposed to us. However, uh, having that importance highlighted on, on regional communities and mining communities in particular um, was very important. The, the main one we did focus on there, which is a common issue across all of Australia at the moment, um, but particularly mining cities are impacted uh, further is the housing um, issues that we have. And, and we're on par with Caratha in regards to the inflation with um, housing prices, housing prices on the market for sale, but also the rental markets as well, and and how we can get some support from uh, the federal government in regards to solving some of these issues, and um, and most importantly, the solutions that Broken Hill City Council have come up with in regards to actually using those as drivers to implement it uh, for governments. So not asking them. Um, so much for their solutions, but we are asking them to take on our solutions um, as a way of supporting uh, Broken Hill and, and the other mining cities. And, F and the FBT, the fringe benefit tax, um, putting that 100% exemption through uh, to everybody in, in mining cities, so not just the employers, but making that more broadly available. And that did receive um, positive feedback from both um, the Labor government and the opposition government in regards to the Labor government um, having submitted it to Treasury for costing um, to go through their budget process and, and the opposition um, putting it as a part of their budget estimates as well um, to put that forward as uh, and a policy amendment around the FBT. Um, we're also very fortunate uh, to be able to have a min uh, meeting with Minister McBain separately uh, for Broken Hill. So I think as, as the Deputy Mayor um, wrote in his report, um, thank you to Linda Scott, um, the President for the Australian Local Government Association for raising and arranging that meeting for us and to be able to raise um, separately um, Broken Hill's concerns around housing, again, around what we can actually do working with Foundation Broken Hill and our other stakeholders on, on various numbers of solutions and um, having them advocate on our behalf with the state government to um, solve some of our crown land issues. And then most importantly, around our airport funding as well. So we have got a number of grant applications in at the moment uh, with the federal government, as well as the state government uh, for the runway upgrades, as well as the terminal upgrades and just pushing the importance of the Broken Hill Airport um, being obviously um, council's number one priority, but also highlighted um, in the New South Wales Far West our regional strategy is their number one priority as well, and that being fundamental uh, to Western New South Wales that it is prioritised. So all in all, a very successful uh, few days and um, very beneficial to be able to meet with the ministers and senators. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, thank you. You've got one. Uh, the train from Mildura to Broken Hill was also mentioned. Ah, yes, did. Apologies, yeah. Mr. Mayor. So we did raise the uh, the train uh, route from Mujura to Broken Hill, being the last um, section to be completed as a part of the, um, I think it was the 1906 um, plan. And that um, received positive feedback as well as being a key uh, freight route uh, for the region, but also highlighted that it is a potential uh, defence route as well, um, which is going through the review. So it was quite timely that it has um, come back on, on the agenda and also obviously the completion um, of the standard gauge uh, from, from Ballarat through to Madura recently um, obviously puts it in good stead for that last little segment to be completed. Obviously a lot of work to go, but it has been raised um, and they are aware of the, uh, aware of the issue, uh, which they probably weren't only a few months ago. Thank you, Mr. General Manager. Um, also, thank you, uh, Councillor Turley. I'm sure you had some input into that. Uh, any other councillors like to speak on that? All those in favour? Declared carried unanimously. Thank you. 
Um, the works committee, item number one, um, community garden at the former Alma Pool site. Do we have a mover for that? Move is written. Move. Uh, Councillor Hewitt seconded. Councillor Turley, did you put your hand? No. Yeah, <laughs> Councillor Turley. Uh, Councillor Hewitt, you'd like to speak to it? Stuart. Stuart, sorry. <laughs> I did this to you the other night, didn't I? <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, just that it's it's a great idea. Um, it's a great way to bring the community together, um, especially across all ages. Gardening's fun across all ages and abilities. Um, so I'm keen to see the policy come to life, as I'm sure Councillor Page would have been if he was here, um, and encourage all the green thumbs out there to have their input once it's ready. Thank you, Councillor Jewett. Uh, any other speakers? No? All those in favour? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Item number two is the minutes of the Norm Fox Sporting Complex. Uh, do we have a mover for that? Move, move Councillor Turley, seconded Councillor Allgate. Yeah. Councillor Turley, you'd like to speak to that? Um, no, this was the inaugural meeting of a new committee and I um, understand they did go ahead last Thursday night their second meeting, but I wasn't informed of that. So we'll let them know that wasn't through an apology, but we just didn't know. Okay. So look forward to seeing how they progress. Okay. Can, can we follow that up? So, Councillor Olga, you'd like to speak to it? Not really. No. Any other speakers? No. All those in favour? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Uh, item number three is the minutes of the BIU band. We have a mover for that. Move the, move the minutes. As Count, we... Councillor Allgate seconded. Yeah. Councillor Gallagher, Councillor Allgate. Oh, really nothing to add except the fact that uh, at both of those meetings I attended and uh, it's pretty obvious that uh, there's a need for additional volunteers. They were just a bare minimum. Yeah. I think four people at uh, both both venues. Thank you, Councillor Allgate. All those in favour? Carried unanimously. Uh, item number four is the minutes of the Memorial Oval Community Committee meeting. Do we have a mover for that? Councillor Gallagher, seconded. Councillor Turley, Councillor Gallagher. No, Mayor Turley, that's working well. The committee, it seems to be um, changing a lot, yep. progressing, and um, I'll just move those minutes. Um, uh, that's one of the uh, committees that has good numbers because the user groups are represented. 100%. They're all separate, yeah. um, have their own time frame of an agenda. So yeah. Yeah. If they know when they can uh, they can ask report requests and so forth. So it's it's open, a frank discussion. It's, it's sitting. It's uh, it's going well. Thank you, Councillor Gallagher. Councillor Turley? No comment? No. All those in favour? Where it carried unanimously? Um, move on to health and building item number one, uh, development of the reconciliation action plan. We have a mover for that. Move, Council, move, move, the recommend, move the recommendation as written, Mayor Kennedy. Uh, could I just could I just say that um, that you're talking about the new action plan as opposed to this current one? the uh, opportunity to renew yes you're the talking about one and it'd be workshops yep so the current one's finished the current it's, one's finished yeah uh, could you just uh, just just one sec council Olga, and go to the general manager yep 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 uh yeah thanks mr mayor so the, yeah the current plan uh is finished so um i, I think as the mayor's suggesting it uh, might be worth um the recommendation that council um, we submit the attached stoplight report to reconciliation um, Australia to finalise the current plan and that we workshop a uh, workshop with councillors the new reconciliation action plan uh, for future consideration but we actually finalise the current plan as as it is it's already finished the current plan yeah yeah, yeah. well that's basically what uh, what the recommendation spills out yeah but we have but we have to send it off don't we so you're happy to send the current one off and send, do the, the... send the current one off yeah. and then we work on the yeah. the stoplight and whatever yeah. for the the yeah. new yeah yeah that that's to be workshopped yeah um councillor brown yeah, just a question mr mayor um for this workshop would that be a councillor only workshop or would you uh, uh, consider I think... including the other members of the because 
uh, it's my understanding that the the wrap is, uh, you know, whatever form it finally takes is something yeah. that's sort of negotiated with all parties, which I, includes. The- I think what we'd be talking about is uh, really about the process that we go forward actually to undertake uh, the consultation with the plan as because for me, I think there needs to be um, not just meetings amongst small groups, but even public meetings involved. So I think what um, is meant by it is the action we take to progress a new plan. So, um, a public public meetings. I mean, this is councils wrap. No, plan. no, I'm talking about um, when we consult about the plan. I think we need to go out to a uh, not just Aboriginal groups that are two or three people. I think we go out to the whole um, Aboriginal community and get good feedback on what should be in our reconciliation plan. But anyway, what I, what I think uh, Council Allgate's uh, thing is, is not about um, the plan being developed at that thing, that uh, as councillors we decide how we progress to develop the plan. Is that yeah. right, Councillor yeah. Allgate? That's, yeah, that's right. That's right. To workshop the, workshop the, the plan, uh, given that the current one has just expired, uh, we need to workshop it and, and uh, send, send, send the existing one off as mentioned, but then workshop the new plan. Yes. How we do that is left to uh, well, the management. Well, to, you know, just management. personally, I think the plan was lacking in a lot of areas and really didn't fulfil what it was meant to fulfil. Yeah, well, it's not a simple plan. It's a complex, yeah. complex area. Yeah. Did uh, we have a seconder for that motion? Councillor Gallagher? Um, I, I just think uh, generally it's a, it's a good idea to have Initially, the council workshop it. Yep. Initially, the council, and then once the council decides its its position uh, in terms of the you know the reconciliation action plan, then go out to the various bodies that are involved, including our reconciliation including the community, our our committee. Yeah, and our yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, any speakers against? Any comments? It's obviously an important one. Anyone? Councillor Brown? Yeah, just a question. Uh, when would you be uh, planning this workshop? I mean, fairly soon, I think. It's um, just I'll, if you don't mind, I'll just ask the general manager when it would be sort of ready to move on to the next step. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, I might just hand over to Ms. Newman, our Director of uh, Corporate and Community, please. Ms. Newman. I mean, the most pro propitious time would be once we have a response from Reconciliation Australia on this one and and that they are then comfortable with allowing us to actually work with in a structured way with the next, with the template, uh, which is structured in such a way that there's a whole range of questions that that, that, that um, uh, federal body then, then, like, like this, it, it reflects this stoplight report. Those questions appear. So the workshop would have to be framed to address those questions. You don't have to have a wrap. You can go. You can develop something all on your own. If you want to stay with a wrap, uh, it comes from Reconciliation Australia. Right. So well, the best time might be to wait. Yeah. I, yep. Thank you. So having said that, um, we might have to. We probably should have our own agreement with. Uh, Indigenous people in the town rather than have a body over in Canberra telling us how we have to deal with um, our own community. So that I'd be prepared be, to add that to. Uh, I think what well, I think we'll just uh, wait until it comes back with the original. And if if um, if if we can't develop a document that suits our community, then uh, we might we might have to develop our own document, but I don't right. so, I don't so, think we need to say it now. So okay, so the original has never been viewed by the authority. No, that's two year plan, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Two thousand and twenty. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can I just clarify? This is actually our second completion of our second, second plan. Council. So we've had this will be the completion of our second plan. Second one, Council Allgate. So it's four years worth, Councillor Turley. Yeah. Uh, all those in favour? Uh, Councillor Gallagher, Councillor Allgate, Councillor Jewett, Councillor Chandler and myself against Councillor Turley and Councillor Brown. Declare it carried.
Um, Broken Hill City Council report, adoption of the draft revised local orders as policy. Do we have a mover for that? I'll move it as written, move the recommendation. Councillor Allgate, Councillor Gallagher, second. Councillor Allgate. Did you want me to read the recommendation? No, no, I'd, it's just the draft local orders policy. Yeah, yep. no, yep. I think uh, I'll move it as written. Yep. Anyone like to speak to it? All those in favour? Declare it carried unanimously. Thank you. Item number three is the draft revised compliance and enforcement policy. Do we have a mover for that? Move that way. I'll move that one too, if you oh, I'll yeah. second it. Uh, Councillor second. Gallagher moved, seconded Councillor Allgate. Yeah. You'd like to speak to it, Councillor Gallagher? Uh, no, Mayor Kenny, just to say that um, we read the report. Um, it's good to see that we've got the compliance draft there and um, it looks like we're moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Allgate. I'd just like to mention that there, all three of these policies that we're talking about, uh, this has been the second one. They're, they're all important, extremely important policies because they incorporate uh, reviewing other policies as well. And uh, you know, uh, we've we've got to make sure that on an annual basis or whenever the appropriate time is to um, upgrade the policies to suit our needs. Yeah. Uh, just also make the comment. Um and it'll be the same for the next policy. Uh, they are going, it's really council move, moving towards, um, rather than penalize people, is to educate people on the, on the, um, on orders, on compliance and on approval. So this, the both these policies, uh, the first one, this one and the one to come is, about making sure that the council works with the community, make sure the community works within the framework so that we can actually get lots of things done for the city. So uh, I congratulate um, the writers of the report. All those in favour? Carriage unanimously. Item number four, um, adoption of the draft revised local approvals policy. We have a mover for that. Councillor Gallagher, seconded Councillor Allgate. Yep. Councillor Gallagher. Yeah, once again, I echo what you said earlier that the reports are being done, the drafts is, is well written, and it's uh, good to see we're reviewing these policies on a regular basis so we can move forward for the betterment of the city. Thank you, Councillor Gallagher. Councillor Allgate, me you. Just to second Councillor Gallagher's comments, another important uh, policy. And as you've uh, you've advised, it's a matter of working with the community and uh, doing things in an appropriate manner and not getting offside with people unnecessarily. Too true. All those in favour? Clare it carried unanimously. Thank you. Item number five, um, Flen Friends of the Flora and Fauna, Barrier Rangers. Do we have a move for that? Councillor Brown, seconded Councillor Turley. Councillor Brown, you'd like to speak to that? Uh, no, Mr Mayor, it was just fairly much business as usual very good business as usual that's a good committee as well all those um any other speakers all those in favor where it carried unanimously thank you uh further reports item one uh the election of the deputy mayor uh there is a hand over to you i think don't i oh, oh right uh, do we have a mover for uh, the recommendation? Move. Move, Councillor Allgate, seconded. Councillor Jewett, all those in favour? Claire carried unanimously. Thank you, Mr Mayor. As returning officer, I advise that one nomination has been received for the position of Deputy Mayor, uh, Councillor Hickey. Nominated by Councillor Allgate and Councillor Chandler. Nomination received on the 28th of September at 6.10pm. Councillor Hickey has provided written advice that he accepts the nomination. I now call for any further nominations to be submitted prior to the ballot being conducted. Uh, with no further nominations, as Councillor Hickey's nomination for Deputy Mayor is uncontested, I declare Councillor Hickey re-elected as Deputy Mayor for the period of 28th of September 2022 until the September 2023 Council meeting 
which is scheduled to be held on the 27th of September 2023. Congratulations, Councillor Hickey, on your reappointment as Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nankerville. Um, I'm sure Jim's watching, so well done, Jim. He's very nervous currently. I don't know if he was. <laughs> Item number two, uh, appointment of delegates to committees uh, for September to September. Do we have a mover for those? I'll Council move, move recommendation. But Cal I'll also move uh, the recommendation item five, add, add to the existing uh, recommendations one before item five, that um, that uh, Councillor Alan Chandler be appointed to the Art Gallery Community Advisory Committee and that Councillor Chandler be the chairperson. Have a second for that, Councillor Allgate. Councillor Gallagher, uh, any debate? Oh, is there any uh, any further comments on the positions? Everyone happy with the positions that are in the reports? Um, perhaps, Mr Chair, item four, you may not need five councillors on the Heritage Advisory Committee yep. if we're looking for problems with getting councillors to nominate right and you could bring back that back to the three that's there. Uh, you happy to accept that into the motion, Councillor Olga? And perhaps the same with the Asset Naming Committee. Um, happy to accept that. I mean, Councillor yeah, Olga yes. the chair of that. Yeah. You know, we bring that back to two councillors. No worries. Happy to accept that. Yes. Councillor Gallagher, happy to accept that. Certainly. Uh, and we're happy to, I think that would mean that there's three councillors on the art gallery. Is that right? Or four? How many is on the art gallery? The art gallery advisory committee. Three. Well, that would make four. So, oh, there's three now and councillor Chandler. Oh, okay. So that fits the constitution. We yeah, well, and so that the constitution, you happy to put so the constitution be amended to allow that, Councillor Olga? Yes, yes, uh, Mayor Kennedy. Okay. Just a, a question, Mr Mayor, does the, the constitution does uh, require the committee itself to elect its chair? The, I know that's been changed several times, but is that? Uh, just through, yeah, I'll ask uh, the general manager. What uh, Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the, the Constitution still has um, the councillors to be um, have preference to be chair of the committee. So if there's more than one councillor, it's for councillors to decide between themselves. However, uh, the Constitution does permit for councillors to not accept the position of chair and then therefore the committee would decide who the chairperson would be. Thank you, General Manager. Uh, all those in favour? Uh, Councillor Gallagher, Councillor Allgate, Councillor Jewett, Councillor Chandler and myself. Uh, the, all those against? Councillor Turley and Councillor Brown. Declare it carried. Item number three, disclosures by councillors and designated persons returns. Do we have a mover for that? Do that way. Councillor Gallagher seconded. Councillor Brown, I'd like to speak to that, Councillor Gallagher? No, Mayor Kennedy, thank you. Councillor Brown? No. All those in favour? Clear it carried unanimously. Item number four, uh, alteration to the ordinary council meeting date for January 2023. Do we have a mover for that? Councillor Turley seconded. Councillor Jewett, speak to that, Councillor Turley. Councillor Jewett. Yep. Sorry, Mayor. It's pretty straightforward. straightforward. No worries. Round your um, time as um, Chairman of the Australian Day Committee, Councillor Gallagher. Yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, lead prevention programs and blood le levels testing in Broken Hill. Do we have a mover for that? Move that way. Councillor Allgate seconded. Councillor Brown, Councillor Allgate. Oh, this this is uh, another important issue that the community is facing. Lead levels uh, uh, still are not uh, checked. Oh, lead levels are checked, but they're they're uh, they're not uh, kept within the requirements 
that uh, we would expect, given that uh, Sydney is, I think the, the standard in Sydney is about half of what we currently find in Broken Hill. Uh, I, I think the, the important thing is that there seems to be some uh, recognition in terms of uh, the minister's response. Uh, it's been pointed out quite clearly that the New South Wales government is responsible for the funding. Uh, I think I think that generally the, the council as such is got to keep um, keep abreast of what's happening in the in terms of the lead level uh, situation for youngsters particularly, and uh, and keep in touch with the relevant minister to to attract more funding, uh, because I mean the greening of Broken Hill. There's so many things, so many factors tied into the lead level. It's the the price of water for the greening of Broken Hill and all sorts of other things that, you know, really are involved. And we need to be reminding the people who make the decisions to get the funding that we really need. For sure. Councillor Brown, you'd like to speak to it? No, really, but I'd be happy to endorse those comments. I mean, this letter really doesn't tell us anything that we didn't know, but at least it kind of, I mean, the least... Uh, it does, I suppose, is maybe remind um, the uh, federal minister that, you know, that is an ongoing issue here. Yes, for sure. Uh, Councillor Brown, uh, Turley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I just, just reminded myself uh, from Councillor Orgate talking about the greening of Broken Hill. And I wondered in the future if we can get an update of the greening of Broken Hill Mark II that was launched um, was it Mark II was launched um, two years ago? I oh, know, could yeah, be. From Landcare and yep. um, what our community can do and council can do to progress the, you know, the that, ground cover across the area. It's quite funny, Councillor Turley, when we were uh, over in Canberra for that, uh, few, that conference, they had the canopy group there and I was up talking to them and they actually showed a tree out the plaza that had grown over that period. So. Um, I was just showing different how the, the canopy um, satellite imaging works and you can see trees growing in real data time. Uh, so that was pretty interesting. So um, we might have some of that stuff or we don't have that, Joe. Yeah, yeah. So we might be able to get a bit of a, even a look at how it's, um, how it's been impacted. Mm. Uh, all those in favour? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Um, item number six is Wentworth to Broken Hill Pipeline subsidy. We have a mover for that. Move that way. Councillor Jewett, seconded Councillor Turley. Councillor Jewett, would you like to speak to that? Yes, thank you. Um, it's, yeah, it was, obviously it's incredibly vital for Broken Hill to have this subsidy. Um, I believe it would cost the average household about $4,000 extra a year without it. So, um, and considering the price of food and petrol and now interest rates in the bank. I'm glad that we've got it, but I think it's more important to get maybe a long-term commitment past 26, yep. 2026, I think, for the yes. community would be um, good. Thank you, Councillor Jewett. I think with an election coming up, we probably need to formulate a few, uh, not to, at this meeting, but probably for the next committee meeting, we need to formulate a bit of a strategy coming into the election to try and get it uh, as a long-term commitment uh, from uh, both uh, the Coalition and the Labor Party because uh, no matter who wins, we want a long-term guarantee. So I, I agree, Councillor Jewett. Uh, any other, Councillor Turley? Yeah, following that, Mr Mayor, perhaps one of the things we could do is invite um, the Minister for Water and the Shadow Minister to attend the chambers and address the Council and also the candidates to would see you, what they can advocate for on behalf of our community. Would you like to add that, Councillor Jewett? Yep. Who was yep. the seconder? Uh, yeah, you're happy to accept that then. <laughs> um, all those in favour? Before you put it, Mr. Uh, Councillor Mr. Algate. Uh, yep. Mayor Kendi, I, I, I believe that uh, the community should be exempt from all of the maintenance and uh, operation costs of the pipeline. Yep. Uh, just a clear exemption. It's uh, 
you know, water is an essential is an essential utility, and um, you know, communities don't survive without water. And uh, we're no different than any other. We've, yeah, Broken Hill has put so much funding into the New South Wales and the, and the federal government over a period of um, the century or so. And uh, it's about time that uh, one of the very essential, the most essential item for human habitation is water, that we get it without paying for the maintenance on something that not all of us uh, supported at the time. It's good now that we've got it, but uh, it's another issue, but I don't think we actually needed to go down this road. But now that we have, we need an exemption. Yeah, for sure. Councillor Gallagher, no. All those in favour, carried unanimously. Um, item seven, child care availability in Broken Hill. Do we have a mover for that? Councillor Turley, seconded. Councillor Jewett, Councillor Turley. Um, we need to continue this debate. I think that childcare goes hand in hand with, you know, attracting people to move to our city to make it a livable city. And that, you know, for every element, I think last time I raised the issue about uh, uh, family daycare, we need to chip away at the government and um, make sure we progress to, um, to build our childcare facilities. Thank you, Councillor Turley. Councillor Jewett. Thank you, McKenna. Yeah, I, I agree with that. It um, goes without saying that it's an issue in Broken Hill um, and it's only going to worsen with the expansion of the city. Um, and it's great with the correspondence um, that's been sent back to us, um, albeit it's not going to be available to apply for till 23-24. So there is not much of a wait, but then building new facilities will take time. So family daycare seems a better short-term thing, is there any way we can open that up and open some more homes up to get a more short-term as well as long-term sort of childcare happening? I know I don't believe it's run by Broken Hill, the family no, daycare. No. Um, is there a people to speak to this at all? Yeah. yeah. Just uh, keep on. Yeah. Only if you want. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll just... Uh, put through the general manager because there there is a, a few things that are going on in the daycare uh, world which are positives for Broken Hill and the general manager will uh, just give a bit of an up, update. Uh, thanks Mr Mayor. It's just a very brief update and we, and we are organising that meeting uh, with, with family daycare as per um, the last council uh, recommendation um for that for that to occur so we can work with those but just out of out of interest um the development application that was submitted for clark street has now been purchased um so that means that would suggest um that construction would commence on that on that in a short period of time so that's um, progressed to the next stage um, and then secondly we've also recently received another development application that's going under assessment at the moment for another child care facility by the same company. So that'll go onto their website for interested parties to um, either construct or, or take over. So there is some movement and um, we'll keep you up to date as, as we find out more information and those developments move along, but it is positive for the city. That's Thank great. you, Mr. That's Mayor. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, General Manager. Uh, yeah, so as everyone can see, it, there is some positive movement um, that goes hand in hand with uh, just the feel in the city and the uh, development that's going on. So it's just another ad. People are seeing things happening and um, they're coming to us, which is good. So thank you, General Manager. Uh, move on to item number, oh, better put it. All those in favour? Claret carried unanimously. Move on to item eight, uh, annual financial statements. Do we have a mover for that? Move, move. Councillor Allgate, seconded. Councillor Gallagher. Councillor Allgate. I'll just comment that, uh, you know, the 2021-22 draft primary financial statements uh, appear to be quite good. I think we all have to recognise it's been a difficult year and uh, it's it doesn't seem to be uh, likely to get much more, uh, much more improved in the current, current year. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, things look, good under the circumstances. 
Thank you, Councillor Olga. Councillor Gallagher. Yeah, just want to echo the comments of Councillor Allgate and also, yeah, it's good to see we've got the good fiscal management of our finances and it's good to see we're going forward, not backwards. Thank you, Councillor Gallagher. Any other councillors? All those in favour? Declared the motion carried. Uh, item number nine, investment report for August 22. Mover. Move the Council recommendation. Allgate. Move the recommendation. Second to Council Allgate. Council uh, Allgate. Gallagher. Second to Council Gallagher. Council Allgate. Oh, just uh, basically repeat what I've said before. I, I think, uh, you know, investing in, in the current climate, uh, you know, worldwide, the uh, situation is subject to change on a daily basis or an hourly basis. So um, all we can do is battle on. And I think um, the staff have got it in hand as, as best anybody can. And uh, we just have to run with it. Uh, the results so far have been uh, at least better than satisfactory. So we've done well so far. Let's hope we can do well in the future. But it's going to be a terribly difficult 12 months ahead. Thank you, Councillor Allgate. Um, no. All those in favour, declare it carried. Um, item number 10, development of strategy for community, uh, draft economic development strategy for community consultation. I have a move for that. Councillor Brown, seconded. Councillor Turley, Councillor Brown, you'd like to speak to that? Uh, no, not really speak to it because we, you know, we've had a lot of discussion about this, but I, I just have a question um, as to how this will be um, advertised to the public. Uh, is it planned to have any sort of presentation of this? It's, you know, it's a it's a pretty important uh, document. Important. It's a pretty pretty important, you know, plan for the for the future. Um, you know, rather than just say, well, there's a copy at the library, or you can look at it you know online i don't know that that attracts many people unless they're really super in interested so i'm just wondering if we're going to have a kind of a i don't know you know you you have a better idea than 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 i would of you know how you, how you can do that yeah. but it just seems to me to need a bit more than just the normal you know the policies there what do you think mm -hmm. if you you know uh, yes, thank you, Councillor Brown. Uh, so also thank you to Anne Andrews, Executive Manager of Growth and Investment uh, for the for the plan. Uh, yes, uh, Councillor Brown, very important uh, document. And, you know, it's what it's not just a document that's meant to sit there. It's actually a document that's meant to market the city. So I'll just um, ask the general manager uh, what, what we'll be doing. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yes, so we'll be out on 28 um, day public exhibition as per, as per our normal processes, but uh, we will have those um, ad additional um, ways of attracting uh, the uh, broken hill community residents to uh, view the plan. Um, but secondly, making sure that we um, circulate and have those workshops with our um, business and um, industrial stakeholders within the city. So Foundation Broken Hill, um, regional New South Wales as, as a state government agency and ensuring um, that it's going to be attractive um, for um, investment in New South Wales as, as a way of um, pushing further industry out to Broken Hill but making sure that we've captured everything and, and we're all working on the same pages so we'll be out speaking to all the businesses and the industry around the uh, around the plan as well as well as the general community but yes it won't just be uh, put on the website and, and waiting for the 28 days to pass by. Thank you. Um, any other councillors? Because it is an important document. So if councillors want to just briefly speak, that'd be fine. Councillor Allgate? Uh, I'd just like to confirm or agree with what Councillor Brown, uh, her comments and uh, and the comments of the general manager and the mayor beforehand. The uh, It's probably one of the most, it's a good report uh, and I acknowledge that and it's probably one of the better well, one of the most important strategies that we have to consider and we have to sell to the community and uh, we have to bring the community along with us uh, during this five-year period from now until 2027 when uh, as a council we we are targeting the fact that we will we'll grow the population to around 25,000. Uh, you know the re-emergence of mining as uh, the principal industry that the town has always been famous for is something that uh, has now reappeared with uh, 
the morning morning uh, activities that are either operating now or on the cusp of uh, uh, beginning to be uh, to be mined, like the Horsens Horsens Iron Ore Show. I think generally the uh, this report uh, is probably, along with some of the council policies, the most important document for the future ahead. That's it, Councillor Morgan. Uh, any other councillors? I'd just like to say, uh, just it, it was good going through, uh, just workshopping that. Um, I don't like to uh, put councillors on the spot, but Councillor Brown during that meeting made the comment when Councillor Brown first moved to Broken Hill, we had a population of about 27,000 people. Uh, the town was happening. Uh, it was a place to be. Um, as a young teacher, I believe, Councillor Brown, uh, when people came here, they didn't want to leave because it was such a vibrant, pumping town. And what what we got from our workshops and all the councillors and the council staff, we want that town to be back. Uh, we want it up to well beyond 25, uh, up heading towards 30,000 people because we all know once it does get to that amount of people, the town becomes self-sustaining. When people move here, they want to stay here. They stay here for many, many years. Um, so we've, we we all acknowledge the fact that we want the town to be growing and growing all the time. So when it is growing all the time, it grows itself. And then um, luckily for us uh, who put our time into the city, uh, the councillors uh, and others, community, we won't have to do as much work because it will be doing itself. So um, so thank you to Anne Andrews, the other staff, and thank you to the councillors because uh, together we made this a really good report, uh, good strategy. Uh, all those in favour? Parrot carried unanimously. Thank you. Uh, item number 11, incentives to support housing renovation. Uh, do we have a mover for that? Move Councillor Chandler, seconded. Councillor Turley, Councillor Chandler, you'd like to speak to that? Yes. Um, since uh, COVID here, we, we've had everything slowed down, but um, building products have gone up 100%. Roofing steel and steel in general has gone up over 100%. This bit with the asbestos, it's only going to help us to try and get a bit better, but that's... The, the people trying to renovate their houses are having trouble, but the help, the asbestos will be a big help because, and it will free up more houses that are in the area that have got asbestos in them. Um, I think it's a great project. Thank you, Councillor Chandler. Any other, Councillor Turley? Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. And um, one of the things I was going to add to that, and well said, Councillor Chandler, was also about the safe disposal of asbestos at the moment and ensuring that it's not dumped in our regeneration area, that it's placed in the waste management facility and that for those people, again, you know, going partnership with Councillor Chandler, that we actually do have safe disposal of asbestos in our community. Thank you, Councillor Turley. Couldn't agree more with both of you. Um, as a council, we want to encourage any development anywhere where council can help uh, at very little cost to council. Uh, we should and we are. And so thank you to the general manager as well. So all those in favour, clear carriage unanimously. Item number 12, uh, Business Far West Activity Report. We have a mover for that. Move the recommendation. Councillor Allgate, seconded. Councillor Gallagher, Councillor Allgate. Oh, I'd just like to, my only comment is that uh, I just wonder about the ongoing funding situation. Uh, I, I, I see there's no mention of, there's no mention in the report, as far as I'm aware, that uh, they're seeking, seeking uh, memberships or something like that to build up their, their bank balance. Uh, they've been given money by the council and uh, and, and another, but uh, the report is a good report, and I thank the business far west for the report. But I do have a concern about the ongoing funding. Thank you, Councillor Gate. Um, through the general manager, do you know anything 
about them. Uh, thanks, yeah. Mr. Mayor. Um, it just uh, briefly, and obviously we didn't put their financials as a part of the report um, being a public document, but um, they still have the entire seed funding um, that was provided by both council and far where, uh, sorry, and Foundation Broken Hill. Um, so they haven't eaten into any of that money as of yet. And I understand their intention um, will be to build that trust amongst the business community um, first and actually get their uh, get their representation out there before they start seeking uh, membership fees. However, um, at this stage, there hasn't been any further representation for further money and that the seed funding originally provided by Council and Foundation Broken Hill um, was supposed to be enough to ensure that they were sustainable until uh, such a time they could receive that income from membership fees. Thank you. Any other councillors? All those in favour? There it carried unanimously. Thank you. Uh, item number 13, uh, suggestion, suggestion to rename the Broken Hill Airport to Chips Rafferty Airport. We have a mover for that. Councillor Chandler, Councillor Gulliger, Councillor Chandler. Yeah, um, our, our airport's already, or the, the bowl of our airport is a, Harry Keelan um, area. Chips Rafferty, we've all, always got his, we've got his name in the second floor of the administration centre, at the civic centre. I don't think we should rename the airport to Chips Rafferty. He, he is, name is tied to Broken Hill, but I think we should look at that somewhere else and just leave the airport as it is. Yeah. You're happy to explain that in your correspondence, Councillor Chandler, that the airport's already named after um, Keelan and that we do have the Civic Centre and thank uh, Mr. Ted Davis. Yep. Yeah, that could be added to the uh, seconder. You happy with that, Councillor Gallagher? Any other speakers? Councillor Turley? No, Councillor just, just, Gallagher. Just one thing, Mayor Kennedy, I, I totally agree with. Councillor Chandler's uh, recommendation and the recommendation of the report. Um, we uh, we do honour Chips Rafferty, um, a very good actor, an Australian actor, uh, born and bred in Broken Hill. Um, we've got the room there and it's uh, well facilitated and it's well um, well used and everyone knows in Broken Hill that's exactly who, who that uh, little area down, downstairs is. Yep. Thank you, Councillor Gallagher. All those in favour? Carried unanimously. Uh, item number 14, event sponsorship. Do we have a mover for that? That is uh, the council provides 10,000 cash sponsorship to the FEFC Holden Car Club of New South Wales to host the national event in Broken Hill in April 2023. Do we have a mover for that? Councillor Gallagher, Councillor Jewett, Councillor Gallagher, I'd like to speak to that. Yeah, just briefly, I mean, Kenny, it's um, it's going to attract a loud, large amount of people here in, into the city. Um, once again, tourism is one of our main industries, and what we've been experiencing in the influx of people coming in for those events and also coming back, I think it's uh, well invested for uh, the city of Broken Hill. Councillor Jewett, like to speak? Yes, thank you. Yeah, I totally agree. It's another great event coming through Broken Hill. It's going to inject money into our economy. So 10,000 is is a great way to, to, to bring that money in um, and yeah, have another event for people to travel and see how great Broken Hill is. For sure, for sure. Any other councillors? No, all those in favour? Carried unanimously, thank you. Uh, item 15, nomination of appointment of community representatives to section 355 committees. Do we have a mover for that? Move that way. Councillor Gallagher, seconded. Councillor Turley, Councillor Gallagher. Uh, just briefly, it's good to see that we're getting another member of the uh, the Memorial Oval. We're, uh, we're busting at the seams. We uh, had trouble getting people before. Now we can share. Now we can share. No problem. <laughs> Councillor Turley? No, no. Uh, no other councillors? It is good to see that uh, we're slowly getting our community numbers back up, uh, 345 numbers. It is important. And one thing that all councillors will acknowledge, uh, Broken Hill City Council would not be able to operate without the volunteers. 
So um, I, it might even be uh, for our next community newsletter, if we could just thank the volunteers that are doing it and perhaps uh, um, just acknowledge that we are starting to go well and that we're still open to, we still have lots of spots for people that, uh, are you happy to accept that on that? Yep. Happy to accept that. Happy to, yep. Okay. All those in favour? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Uh, minutes of the local traffic committee meeting. Councillor Brown, you happy to move that? Second. Councillor Turley. Councillor Brown, anything of interest in that one? No, uh, Mr Mayor, most of these are long-standing things that they take you know, quite a while to resolve um, unless there are questions there. I think, you know, maybe an interesting one is uh, the uh, concern about uh, um, uh, traffic cars going too fast down Patton Lane at the Rainbow Preschool. So there's yeah. a suggestion that that be one way. So that's an interesting, interesting change. I think that'll be a good, good decision. And we're still waiting for the transport for New South Wales schools kind of representative not she's not from education but she's she's the um the person who who looks at safety of school she's been um consulting with the uh, Burke Ward uh, about that problem but that yeah. that wasn't uh, resolved that's still in progress but um she there's been a long standing issue in uh, in um uh U, um, Union Street behind uh, Morgan Street, and that's yeah. been, you know, there's there's been a trial there with the traffic, and I think that's almost resolved. But she had some concerns with that one, so hopefully that one will be resolved, um, you know, fairly soon. Thank you, Councillor Brown. All those in favour, carried unanimously. Um, item number seventeen, uh, action report, Councillor Gallagher. Yeah, happy to move that. Seconder, Councillor Jewett, Councillor Gallagher. Once again, a lot of green is looking looking very, very good that we're getting our actions done and completed um, on time. Thank you. All those in favour? Oh, um, Councillor Brown, sorry. No, I have a, a yeah, just a question, uh, Mr Mayor. It's on um, the item uh, uh, proposed transport op options bottom of, starts at the bottom of page 14. I just would interested to know the reason for the delay in finalising that issue that's to do with the the the, the Qantas issue yeah, yeah. it seems to be seems to be a delay there I'm just wondering what's the story there happy to answer that yeah. thank you Mr Mayor um yes the probably probably um won't come as any surprise um due to the issues that Qantas have been facing lately um across all facets of their organization we've actually moved through about three different um, commercial managers that have been managing this contract of Broken Hill had a phone call um, early this week from a new um, a person who's addressing that contract. So um, by the next council meeting, we should have a positive update in that regard, as long as there aren't any other movements uh, within, within Qantas. That being said, um, it's still on the, the arrangements that were put in place at that period of time uh, around the agreement of the landing fees and any additional services, um, obviously not going to do much to say um, in open council, um, but they are being adhered to. It's just a matter of the actual document being formalised. Thank you. Uh, all those in favour? Carried unanimously. We move on to questions taken on notice from the previous council meeting. Item number one is councillors' questions. We have a mover for that. Councillor Gallagher, seconded Councillor Jewett. Anything to say, Councillor Gallagher? Any other councillors? No? All those in favour? Declared it carried unanimously. Move on to item two, uh, public forum questions taken on notice. Um, we have a mover for that. Councillor Gallagher, seconded Councillor Chandler. Councillor Gallagher? No, Mayor Kennedy. No. Any other comments? No? All those in favour? Declare it carried unanimously. We move on to item 17, questions for the next meeting arising from items on the agenda. Do we have any questions from councillors? No, uh, one I'd like to put on um, uh, probably to the health and building committee is 
it's been uh, said that alligator weed is in the Menindee Lakes system. Uh, now that's a, uh, if councillors look that up, it's a very, a, a very noxious weed and very difficult to get, get rid of if it is there. Um, so rather than do anything tonight, we'll just put it on the agenda for uh, the next meeting, if that's all right with the uh, general manager. Thank you. Councillor Brown. Yeah, it's just uh, uh, a question, which is really sort of a request for an update on the, the fruit fly situation, because we're yeah. now getting, you know, with the weather finally warming up a bit, uh, it's now getting to the time when it becomes... <laughs> It starts becoming, you know, if it's not yep. sort of dealt with now, it's going yep. to be too late. I'm just wondering whether there's been any develops developments with that. I know that there was yep. a, there's a, you know, there've been, mm -hmm. been various consultations with with people, and it's kind of a. But I just would like a bit of an update yep. on that, if there for is sure. Anything to for sure, for sure. I spoke to the general manager at the beginning of the meeting, so I'll put just pass on. Um, the general manager will also be doing another press release, just letting the community also know what we're doing because we want to try and stamp it out. Um, and have everyone uh, put out baits all at once. But I'll hand over to the general manager. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so <clears throat> about it would have been about a month, three weeks ago now, we did put out a, um, a social media uh, release around uh, fruit fly and, and the resources available linking people back to uh, the Department of Primary Industries as the primary um agent in regards to fruit fly and that contains resources on how you can actually build your own traps um, as well as baiting fruit fly and um, pointing people towards local suppliers to purchase um, fruit fly traps if rather than um, make their own we're still in conversations with land carry on what we can do in, in partnership with them around making sure that we can promote those activities however as the mayor said we will put out another further release around the importance of fruit fly coming into the the new season and that it's important that everyone uh, does it at the same time to try and um, push it out as much as possible but as as um, we've mentioned previously it's really unfortunate that broken hill was removed from the Sunraiser fruit fly exclusion zone and um, has ultimately put the onus back onto residents in regard to fruit fly rather than having that state agency um, assisting with it, which has you know, caused us quite um, amount of um, concern within, within the city. So we're still working on that part as well in regards to further support from um, the New South Wales state government. Yeah, and I don't think they realise just how uh, critical it is because eventually it'll get down to Mildura if uh, they don't deal with it here in Broken Hill it will eventually end up down there so I don't think they realise just how correct. Councillor Turley. Um, look I just had one if uh, councils could be updated on the progress for Imperial Lakes. Yep. Thanks. Uh, I will we'll pass that also to the general manager but just there is some um, the wheels of bureaucracy turning slowly um, uh, Simon Molesworth did explain a bit at the uh, debutante ball about how it's progressing and he's still happy, just uh, very slow. Gen to the general manager, happy to, or I'll say what I know about. All right. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so just really it's just bu bu bureaucracy going slowly. They still plan to get uh, everything that, um, and eventually take over that piece of, uh, land and everyone in the community can be thankful that that land is actually freehold, which means that once they get it, there won't be any uh, impediments at all that they won't be able to deliver on what uh, has been given in presentation to councillors. Uh, but quite happy to uh, invite uh, Simon Molesworth to give us up an update if you'd like, Councillor Turley. Yeah. Yep. Uh, any other councillors? No. Move on to item number 18, which is public forum session, the second one. Uh, do we have any members from the public that would like to speak? No. Uh, so we'll move on to confidential matters. We have two uh, items in the confidential matters. They won't take long to deal with. Uh, so if people would like to hang around to the end, it shouldn't take too long. Uh, so we could have someone move in to go into confidential session. Councillor Gallagher. Seconded. Seconded Councillor Allgate. Uh, 
Uh, happy to read those out, General Manager. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Confidential matters of council, item one, council resolved, recommend uh, resolved one, the Broken the City Council report number 208 slash 22 dated September 9, 2022 be received. Two, that Connex Group Proprietary Limited be awarded the contract for T22 slash five request for tender for Thomas O'Farrell Street intersection reconstruction for the amount of $434,759.95, excluding GST. And three, that council approve an increase in capital budget for the project of $70,208.95. Item two, Broken Hill City Council Report number 209 slash 22, Council Resolved 1, that Broken Hill City Council Report number 209 slash 22, dated September 12, 2022, be received. Two, that Council awards the tender T22 slash 4, request for tender, Warnock Street Depot development, detailed design, including a optional additions, traffic assessment and environmental assessment to GHD Proprietary Limited for $1,253,158, excluding GST. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. That is the meeting closed. Thank you, everyone, for their attendance.